What is up everybody and welcome back to another self-defense video. Normally when I'm on the camera you're used to seeing us going over self-defense tips, uh, different techniques, different situations that are all self-defense related. Well today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're actually going to do a product review on some self-defense keychains that Century Martial Arts was ever so kind to send us a test out. So uh, they've been reaching out to us saying that they've really enjoyed the content that we've been providing both on Instagram as well on YouTube and they were ever so generous to send us a few of their self-defense keychains for us to test out, play around with a little bit. And we've been pressure testing them, we've been practicing different situations with them, we've experimented holding them, feeling them out a little bit and kind of seeing how they work in regards to our techniques. So today we're going to give you a full-blown review on all four of them, let you know what we think Think of them truly and which ones we feel that are best suited for you in regards to protecting yourself when you're on the street now again understand that when it comes to any sort of self-defense tool or device that protects you and keeps you safe understand that most of the time those devices will in turn damage your attacker so be sure that if you are practicing with these that you are practicing in a safe environment with people that know what they're doing do not just play around with these these are not toys these are life-saving devices and tools practice with them safely so without further ado, let's go over these. So before we actually go into the review itself, let me just kind of preface this with a quick little note regarding the self-defense keychains to begin with. If you've never used one of these, you have to understand that these are self-defense tools. It is not the end all be all in regards to self-defense. And just like any weapon, if you do decide to carry one of these tools or keychains or any sort of kind of self-defense device that can help protect yourself on the street, you have to train on how to use that device to begin with. It is not something that I recommend you just buy offline or buy from a friend, put it in your pocket, put it on your keychain, put it in your purse, and hope that it's gonna keep you safe on the street. Because if you are not sure how quite to use it, how to hold it, how to take it out properly, when it comes down to a real situation, you're gonna need it, you're actually gonna put yourself in a worse position by fumbling around trying to get the device to actually work and function properly, that you're not gonna be aware of what's going on in that situation. And again, as I said, you're gonna put yourself at greater risk. So. Whatever item you decide to get, and if you do decide to purchase one of these keychains, make sure you train with it, you actively practice with it, you use it, you learn how to hold it, you learn how it feels before you decide to carry it with you on the streets. On top of that, it is just that. It is a tool. It is not the end all. I highly recommend that you still take some form of self-defense training, You know, whether it's jujitsu, hapkido, taekwondo, karate, boxing, Thai boxing, any form of martial arts. Take some sort of physical training and allow this to be your secondary backup in case your actual training falls through. Yes, I carry one of these keychains on all my key sets at all times, but to me it's a last resort, whereas my actual self-defense and martial arts training is my primary resort. So have something that you have like that as your primary. This is just a tool that will assist you in your actual self-defense training. So just keep that in the back of mind as we go through all this stuff. Three keychains and one baton. Now, we're gonna go through all these. I'm gonna go through them in the order that I feel that I would recommend purchasing them. Um, and as we're discussing this, we'll also kind of show you some footage of us actually practicing with these things in live situations and kind of pressure testing them and seeing just how they work with a partner in a real situation and kind of give you a little bit of that feedback. So we're going to kind of do a little bit of both. So let's get to it. If you think of like a self-defense keychain, this is probably the one that you've seen all over the place. You can find these all over the internet, um, but it is pretty much just your standard self-defense keychain. It's, you know, maybe half a foot long, um, depending on, you know, which company you're buying from, depends on how thick they are. But either way, these are pretty much a generic style. These ones aren't crazy sharp. They do come with somewhat of a pointed tip a little bit, just in case, but it's not something that I would think could really do much puncturing in that point, but it, it definitely is gonna add some paint. Now, the nice thing about these ones, they are grooved a little bit, which does help uh, prevent it from sliding in and out of your hand. They do have the keychain attachment at the end that allows you to attach this to your keys or your lanyard or whatever it is that you want to attach it to. Now, again, with all these keychains, the recommended way of carrying them obviously is not ever going to be between your fingers. I don't care what training you have or who told you that, but you are never to carry one of these things between your fingers. And you are holding one of these keychains. The idea is that you're simply just holding it in your fist. You don't necessarily have to put your thumb on the top. However, just understand that the more impact that you're having with this and the harder impact that you're having it is going to slowly kind of start sliding back into your hand so my recommendation is to just keep your thumb on top and just keep it as a nice firm tight grip grip around the keychain itself so that way when you are making striking contact it's not pushing back into your hand as much and it still able to get a nice strike out now one thing i find that a lot of people actually do like about this one um, especially those who prefer not to carry knives or any sort of sharp object as a form of self-defense it says it does have a pointed end but it's not really again it's not really that sharp it's not really going to puncture any skin unless you hit it in an extremely vulnerable spot which could be the case if it's a life-threatening situation but if you're just hitting somebody in the arm and the leg there's a very slim chance that you're actually going to puncture the skin but it still will do heavy damage. You can do heavy bruising, heavy swelling. Um, you may damage the bone, you may damage the joint, depending on where you're striking, but this will 
trust me, this will definitely pack a punch with it. Now, another nice feature is the fact that it does have a decent amount that actually sticks out from your hand, which means you get this much space to actually make contact with the person, which works well if you're trying to break grips, if you're trying to get a good strike. I know some keychains that I've tried in the past leave you a very small area to strike, which means that the actual attacker is not really going to feel that much damage. So the fact that this one has a good inch and a half of spot that's sticking out means that anytime you make contact with your attacker, they're going to feel the full force of this along with the force of your power as it pushes, presses into their body, wherever it is that you're striking. So this is definitely a good one in that sense of that feature. Now, as you can see in some of the videos that we've shown you, um, this one works extremely well getting out of different situations. You can break the grips, you can do some strikes to the legs, strike to the torso, strike to the back. You can use it to restrain a person. You can put a lot of pressure on different joints and again, kind of different pressure point areas that will stop the person dead on their tracks. Um, very, very easy to carry. Again, you can carry it either which way. I don't recommend carrying it this way personally. I always prefer to kind of carry it this way again with my thumb on top, just because it's a little bit safer. Um, but at the, end of the, at the end of the day, I think this is probably one of the best self-defense keychains that's out there, just for my personal opinion. But again, it is something that you have to actually put through the test, try it out, and see for yourself how you truly like it. But give this one a shot. The second keychain that Sentry provided us is very similar to the first one, but with two minor differences, major depending on the way that you view it. One of it being that this one actually has grooved handle, which I actually prefer over the initial one. So if you look at the two here, this one's a little bit more just kind of flat all around. This one's got like the nice grooved handles. Now, what this allows you to do is that when you are grabbing it, it actually forms around your palms and your knuckles a little bit better so that it doesn't slide in and out of your fingers. If you've got real sweaty hands or if you're in a, you know, depending on circumstances, if you've got sweaty palms or any of that sort, when you are striking with this one, there's a good chance that this one's gonna slide in and out of your palm a little bit more. Whereas this one, because of the grooves, is gonna sit nice and firmly in your hands. Now, the other major difference with this one is the point on this one. Now, oh, this one's ruthless, this one's like a knife. As you can see, this one's got a lot bigger and sharper of a point compared to the first one. Now, in my preference, I prefer to do this one because I don't necessarily wanna cause too much damage to my attacker. I wanna do enough damage for me to get away, but not necessarily put the person in life threatening position or um, potentially do some life-threatening damage to the person. This one, depending on where you strike, very easily could puncture the person's skin. So you have to kind of be aware of that one. Now, as you also will see in the videos, we do mention the fact that I think this one is a little bit more suitable for someone that's already been attacked or had some sort of trauma in their life and they're a little bit more on edge walking by themselves uh, down the street to work, to their car, whatever the case may be. I feel like this one would provide you with a better sense of safety over this one. However, compared to these two, I personally think that this one is better all around again, just because it still does the damage that it needs to get done, but it doesn't go over the top attacking your person. So that's kind of like really the two main differences between those two. I do wish that these grooves were available in this model with this point rather than this point, just because I feel like it would be nice to have a little bit more of a grooved grip, again, just so that it prevents that ability from sliding out. But other than that, they're pretty much the same length. You still get the same amount that sticks out at the end. Again, this time it's just sharpened down to a point. You still keep your thumb on the top to keep it from sliding. And again, this one still fits nicely in the palm of your hand. So either way, in my opinion, both of these are the top two choices in my eyes in regards to self-defense keychains, but out of the two, I'd still recommend this one first. Now the third option, when I first looked at it, I was incredibly intrigued with it. I've seen some like these in the past, but I've never actually tried it. The more I use it, however, I can't 100% say that I personally would ever want to carry one of these, but again, that's just my personal opinion. So the third one comes in kind of a plastic form. Now I have, I do have some plastic keychains of a different variation that I use personally, but again, just not in this shape. And I can tell you that the reason I was intrigued with this one initially was the initial shape of the actual keychain to begin with, because I looked at it and said, oh, that's gonna fit perfectly in my palm. So the idea of once I grabbed it is that my fingers would be able to wrap nicely around it and it would keep it again, similar to the second keychain, it would keep it from sliding in and out of my palm as I'm making contact with my attacker. The problem with this one that I found is that as I squeeze this one and the harder that I would squeeze it as I'm attacking my or fending off my attacker is that it feels like I'm squeezing and clamping down on a credit card, which means it feels like it's tearing into my skin. Now, it wasn't the case. It didn't do any damage to my hand, obviously, but it to me, that's just what it felt like. And I was more focused on trying to find a right grip rather than paying attention to the actual situation, which is not something that I want to worry about if I'm in an actual fight. I want to be focused in on the fight, defending myself, using whatever I need to use to get out of the situation alive, not sitting there trying to figure out how to get this thing to work in my hand. So that's kind of really my only big downside to this. In regards to durability, I mean, I'm bending this thing as hard as I can 
and it's barely moving so you can tell that this thing is very sturdy it doesn't really move it does also have somewhat of a point at the end that's kind of hard to tell but there is a little bit of a point at the end very similar to the first one um, the only other downside other than the way that it fits in my hand is the fact that it is very very little point that sticks out compared to the other ones just so you can kind of see the difference so you can see this one ends right here whereas the first ones come all the way out so you can see what i mean by the fact that you may be able to get one good hit off with this one before it sucks back up in your hand even more and then you're pretty much just going to be hitting the person with your fist which again if you know how to hit with a fist you're going to be just fine but if you're trying to depend on this to save your life or to get out of situations it might be hard after that first strike and you'll see again in the video the struggles that we found trying to actually land strikes with this one compared to the first two but again Depending on the size of you, the size of your hand, this one actually may work better. But for me personally, this one doesn't work for what I need it to do. So I would stick to the first two in that sense. <laughs> See, I don't think, I just like, after two strikes, yeah. like, <laughs> I could kind of feel it, but not really. I was just trying to react. It's not. And you get like one good hit and it instantly like shrinks up to where I have this tiny point. Now, even these ones move you know, if you just hold it like this and you don't put anything on top, as you're hitting, it's gonna start kind of shriveling up a little bit into your hand the more you hit, which is why you put your thumb down. With this one, even if I do kind of put my thumb down, like it still leaves such a tiny aspect. Out of the three that they've provided us, both from what I've told you just now and what you've seen in the footage, I would 100% say that this is probably the best one that I would recommend you going to. I don't really believe in the brass knuckle style ones. I don't believe really in any of the ones where you have to kind of wrap your fingers through it just because again, I feel like if you're if you're gonna punch or anything like that, you're gonna do more damage to your hand and your knuckles rather than if you're simply carrying this like a knife or a stick and you're just striking the person. Again, if this isn't really moving, you're not doing any damage to your hand, but again, you're doing the damage to your attacker, which at the end of the day is the goal. So now when it comes to the baton, Let's grab this out of the box real quick. One thing that is nice to note about this one is it does come with a carrying case that you would attach to your pants, belts, whatever the case is. Um, you're not really gonna attach the baton to your keys because it's gonna weigh way too damn much. And you're not really gonna attach your keychain to your belt because you're not gonna be able to get it off. So it's either you have them accessible with your hand or you have it accessible on your waist, waistband. So this one comes with a nice waistband attachment. Again, when you fit it in there, you can adjust the strap here accordingly, but this is what it kind of looks like. It does have an adjustable strap, so you can adjust how tightly this sits in the waistband. And then obviously, depending on how tight or loose you have, it depends on how easy it is for you to pull it out. Now, the weapon itself is phenomenal. It's a lot heavier closed than once you actually open it, and I was actually worried about that. But once it's open, it doesn't feel that heavy at all. It kind of feels actually pretty light. Um, but as a, a single-handed device like this, it is a little bit heavier, so just keep that in mind. The major issue that we had in regards to utilizing this as self-defense on the street is the accessibility of this. It's not that easy to pull that out of your waistband and the fact that you then have to whip your hand to actually open the baton in the first place. It's not one that just opens on its own. You have to whip in a hard motion and even sometimes when we would whip it, it would take us two to three whips to actually get the baton to completely unfold to begin with. But again, once it's open, you do have a nice range of attacks. You are able to protect yourself a little bit more at a distance. Whereas when you're trying to defend yourself with the keychain, this really only works if they are actually close quarters or physically grabbing you, whereas this one I can actually fend the person off as they're trying to get close to me to begin with. So there is that benefit to having that. You just have to get past the idea that I have to be able to access this one and it's a lot harder to access it when compared to the keychains itself. Now, one thing that you will see in the video when we are trying this out is the idea that if you do manage to pull this out as your attacker is attacking you, you are in close quarters. I am actually able to use this itself as a keychain. Again, you get a nice extended area to strike and I am able to jab, strike, hit this person to create a little bit of distance. And then once we've created that distance, then I can go ahead and open this thing up. So if we're in a tight situation and he's grabbing me, bear hugging me, whatever the case is, and this is like in my side here and he's squeezing my arms, it's gonna be very difficult for me to be able to pull this out of its holster, whereas those ones I'm already holding in my hand. Now, if I am able to get this out, so same position, like let's say we are able to get it out, obviously I'm not gonna be able to whip it from here, but I can shrink on the grip and start jabbing him with this a little bit to break the distance, and the second that we break free, ah! And then we go to town with the baton. <laughs> So once the item is fully extended, you do have about a foot and a half to two feet worth of baton here to play around with. Again, that allows you to fend off your attacker with a little bit more of distance control rather than having to deal with the person up close. 
This, during our training and playing around with it, we did find that yes, you are able to actually restrain your person with this, you can disarm weapons with this, you can fend off punches, you can fend off grips, you can fend off leg attacks, tackles, all that sort. But again, you have to be able to train with this. Now, in regards to this compared to the keychain, this would take, and I would recommend that you train a lot more with this than you would need to with any sort of the keychain. Only again, because you have to be able to access this one efficiently, you have to be able to take it out efficiently. And again, you have to understand how to properly use this one. And with any weapon of any sort, if you're bringing any sort of weapon to a fight as a self-defense tool, you have to be able to also know how to fend yourself against it in case your attacker by any means gets a hold of it and then starts using it against you. You better know how to defend yourself against it as well. So just kind of keep that in mind of if I lose control of this baton, there's a good chance that this person could take it and start whacking me with it. So just bear that in mind as you use it. But personally, don't think I would ever carry this really on me as in regards to a self-defense tool only because I feel that in a sudden unexpected attack, as you'll see in the video, um, I feel like it's very hard to be able to suddenly whip out my baton and protect myself. Whereas if you're carrying a keychain, that's again, I'm holding this in my hand. I have my keys ready. Like this is on me at all times. This I'm ready to go no matter what happens. Someone comes up and grabs me. Someone comes up and tries to push me, punch me, abduct me, whatever the case may be. I'm able to fend myself off immediately. Whereas with the baton, I have to be able to access this in the first place. Then I have to open it and then I have to fend off my attacker. So in regards to that uh, accessibility aspect, the baton itself, in my eyes, is not something that I recommend you would carry strictly for a self-defense tool. Now, this would be one that I would like keep in my car. You know, mm -hmm. um, this would be one that I would keep at my bedside. This is a good self-defense weapon to have if I know something's happened. If I'm caught off guard, I definitely think sticking to one of these two would be your best bets. Because again, I can be casually walking down the street with my keys in hand, he attacks me, I defend myself, and we move on from there. But to have him like come out of nowhere and me all of a sudden whip out my baton and have to start fending myself off with that, that's it. If it's a spur of the moment, a blitz attack, you don't expect it, this I think is gonna protect you more than this will. So it's a great weapon, it works real well. Once it's open, trust me, this thing is real hard to close. We've Even when we slam this on the ground a couple times, it takes a, a good couple thrusts to actually get the thing to collapse back up. So this is a very sturdy baton, probably one of the better ones I've seen out there. Um, so nice job to you, Sentry, on that. But again, in regards to like a self-defense tool, not always something that I would recommend carrying around. And again, if you do, get the proper training for it first. Again, at the end of the day, I think this keychain would be your top choice with this one being a close second. Again, really the only difference between these two in my eyes is the point. This one I find to be a bit more lethal or in, and threatening than this one. However, this one, trust me, still packs a punch. And for me personally, I'd rather pack the punch and do the damage necessary to get out. Whereas this one, I feel like no matter where you strike the person, it's always gonna kind of take it one step farther, um, which is fine if that's the, where it needs to go. But because of my already prior experience, this is gonna benefit my training more than this will. This one, like I said, if you've been through trauma or if you've had, if you've been attacked in your life or any of that sort, this one I feel like is gonna make you feel safer as well as keep you safer when compared to this one. But again, that's just my personal opinion on it. So, so that's all I've got for you today. I'm gonna to put all the links to these products down below in the description, so be sure to check them all out. Shout out to Century one more time for sending us this stuff. Again, I've been uh, familiar with Century's products for a long time, ever since I've started martial arts as a kid. Um, they make great self-defense products all around, as uh, both as self-defense tools as well as self-defense items to train with and practice with. So again, hope that we are able to show you kind of some of those down the road in the future. But if that's all, let us know in the comments what you thought about this video and what you think about these keychains, and we'll see you next time. Peace out.